Now on KGW News, a wildfire spreads quickly in the gorge, forcing evacuations. Plus the trickle down impact of this COVID surge. We can't go to the place that we're supposed to go to to get treatment. That's just a little insane. A family has to drive hundreds of miles for cancer treatment for their three year old. And a bus driver shortage is throwing a wrench in back to school plans. First here at 11, evacuations have just been lowered in the Dalles as crews get a handle on a brush fire. Hello and thank you for joining us. I'm Laurel Porter. The fire is burning on West 13th Street at the northwest edge of town. A huge plume of smoke could be seen from our sky cam in the Dalles when this fire broke out this afternoon. Now, new video from Sky tonight shows just how close the flames came to buildings in the area. You can see there a hillside just charred black. At least 50 acres of private land was burned. As of right now, crews are in mop up mode, working to put out any hot spots and get the fire fully contained. Level three evacuation orders have been lowered to level two, meaning people can return home, but need to be ready to leave again if the fire kicks back up. It's back to school this week for many local districts. Vancouver started today. Portland starts tomorrow. This was the scene in front of a Vancouver school this morning. A long line of parents dropping their kids off. More parents may be choosing this option because there's a big shortage of bus drivers right now. Mike Benner found out the issue stretches across the country. Wednesday marks the first day of school for Portland Public Schools. For the first time in a long time, yellow buses will be rolling down our streets, but not without difficulty. PPS leaders say it's been a significant challenge recruiting bus drivers, and by no means is PPS alone. We're looking to fill 100 driver positions right now. And at your last job fair, how many people showed up? We had 16 show up at our 16. last job. 16. 16. That's the situation in a Florida school district, and it's no better in Maryland. Listen to how one driver there explains the driver shortage. The pandemic has done a lot to deter people from applying to be school bus drivers because of the, the close quarters that you're in on a school bus. Back in Portland, the driver shortage will impact bus routes at 17 schools. We're told bus routes may be consolidated or pick up drop off times adjusted. District leaders say they're tackling the problem by pulling licensed drivers from desk duty in the transportation center and borrowing drivers from other school systems. No doubt it's a tall task, but it appears to be temporary as PPS is hoping to be fully staffed again in a few weeks. You can find a list of the schools impacted by this bus driver shortage on our website, KGW.com. In the meantime, nobody from Portland Public Schools was able to go on camera and address this driver shortage. But in an email to parents, they said they know this will cause an inconvenience and last minute adjustments for some families. They apologize and appreciate the understanding. Reporting in North Portland, I'm Mike Benner for KGW News. We visited the Evergreen School District in southwest Washington today to see what heading back to class looked like there. For most, it's back to full-time in-person learning. Of course, that comes with a statewide mask requirement for all students, staff, and anyone else inside school buildings. That didn't seem to dampen the excitement for kids arriving at Silver Star Elementary School. While there are options for online learning for all grade levels, most kids are back in class. Let's take a look at when other students are going back to class. As we said, Portland Public School starts tomorrow, but several other districts don't start until after Labor Day. Beaverton, Gresham Barlow, Salem Kaiser, and Tiger Tualatin start on the 7th and 8th. Hillsboro starts classes on the 9th. Of course, all this is happening as Oregon and Washington continue to see a surge in COVID cases. We wanted to take a closer look at the deadly cases tonight. This graph shows the number of deaths in Oregon week by week. 110 deaths were reported last week. Unfortunately, that number has sharply risen over the past month, but deaths still remain lower than the previous peak in December. The COVID surge has put an enormous strain on hospitals, but even patients who don't have COVID are feeling the impact. Pat Doris has the story of one family from Grants Pass, which has to drive to Portland for care. Meet three-year-old Avery Burrell and her mom, Melody. They're from Grants Pass. They were at Dornbecker Children's Hospital this past weekend. 
They were there for Avery's chemo treatment. She has a form of leukemia. They were in Portland because of a staffing shortage at the hospital where she's normally seen in Medford. It was really hard. It was very stressful. You know, I felt like my heart was in three different places with my husband being here, my youngest being with grandma, and then, you know, even Avery just having to watch her go what she's going through. It's, it was a lot. Sick COVID patients, most unvaccinated, have overwhelmed the hospitals in both Grants Pass and Medford. Only Medford, 30 miles from home, offers the cancer treatment that Avery needs. Like many others around Oregon, the hospital has lost workers during the pandemic. Some have left the business. Others transferred to clinics with more stable hours and less stress. A spokeswoman said it's left the pediatric area without enough staff at times. As a result, the family drove 243 miles to Portland to get Avery's treatment on time. Well, that's hard as a parent to hear that we're like fighting day by day on, you know, whether her treatment works or not. Yeah. If we're too late because we couldn't get in because of COVID, you know, it's, it's a lot. It's hard. It's a lot of emotions. Avery's dad, Ryan, said he's not angry with those who are getting sick, but is frustrated with health care leaders. It's not a resentment thing towards the families. It's not a resentment thing towards the people that are actually sick themselves. It's more of just a resentment towards the organization inside the healthcare system to make this happen and or not. The hospital spokeswoman said they have hired six new nurses in the past couple of months, are using traveling nurses, and are still trying to hire more. In the meantime, the family is mentally preparing for another trip from Grants Pass to Portland. For us to be told that we, you know, it's just going to get worse and we can't go to the place that we're supposed to go to to get treatment, that's just a little insane. And They're it, basically yeah. saying there's no room for us because of what's going on. That was Pat Doris reporting. And despite the challenges, there is some encouraging news tonight. We're happy to report the family tells us their daughter is in remission and the outlook is good. So that's great news. New tonight, a thief was busted stealing from a car in Beaverton. Now, the car turned out to be bait set by the Washington County Sheriff's Office. You may have heard of the county's bait package program. Detectives will put GPS trackers in what looks like a regular package delivered to a doorstep. Then, if a porch pirate comes along and swipes it, deputies can easily track them down using a map that follows their every move. The county also has a bait car that works the same way. The GPS is attached to items in the car. If someone breaks in, detectives can get an alert and follow the trackers to make an arrest. Sometimes we'll get communities who will request it through our crime prevention office and say, hey, we know you have this bait program. Our community is getting destroyed on a weekly basis by people stealing stuff out of cars. Can we please get the bait car and we'll take it out and we'll put it in those communities and hopes to kind of deter and curb the, the activity there as well. The suspect today is accused of stealing from the car while it was parked on Southwest Barnes Road. Police arrested him within 15 minutes of the break in. The St. Helens High School marching band is recovering after being victims of theft themselves. Someone took their trailer full of gear. It was a $10,000 loss. Catherine Cook shows us how the community of St. Helens and beyond stepped up to help. When the St. Helens High School marching band and color guard take the field, they give it their own. They put in the practice to shine at competitions, and on those special days, they depend on their gear, like their St. Helens Band Patrons trailer. It holds all their camping equipment, tents to change in, supplies to cook with. On July 13th, someone stole the trailer and everything in it from the school parking lot. Band director Noel Freshner hoped a staff member had simply moved it. Nope, it was gone. Um, they, they just straight up took it. Luckily, no musical instruments were inside, but to replace the trailer and its contents will cost $10,000. It was a real bummer uh, for these kids, and we've had to really bust our butt to try to um, replace it. It all struck a chord with community members, and not just in St. Helens. Rival bands from Tigard and Sherwood High Schools made donations. A can and bottle drive amassed four trailer loads of recyclables. Former band parents and alumni brought them out from all over the region. 
it was heartwarming. I got to hear some stories, meet some people who were in the band in the 50s. There's also a GoFundMe account that's now over $4,000. Altogether, they've raised 11 grand, enough to cover the trailer. And we thank everybody who, who has stepped up. I mean, we just feel really loved right now. And now they can focus on their every year fundraising needs and what they do best, raising spirits. Catherine Cook, KGW News. Woo! Go St. Helens. Well, the man who sparked a search that shut down the Montevilla neighborhood for hours this morning is in jail tonight. And police now say he was carrying a BB gun that looked like a real gun. This was the scene from Sky 8 this morning, and you can see armed officers going door to door and into backyards looking for the suspect. The investigation started when someone called 911 saying their car had been stolen in the area of 92nd and Stark, and they just spotted it stopped in a parking lot. When police showed up, the suspect sped away in the stolen car. Police used their vehicles to surround the car, but the driver got away, got out and ran. He was later found hiding in a crawl space under a house and was then arrested.